Second Chronicles 35. Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, everything according to the law, and they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month, according to the law. And he set the priests in their charges where they belong and encouraged them to serve of the house of the Lord. He's helping the priests. He's uh, egging them on. He's, let's go. Great job. All right. And said unto the Levites, addressing Levites, that taught all Israel. So the Levites were in charge of teaching Israel God what to do on the Passover day which were holy unto the Lord, put the holy ark in the house which Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your soldiers. Serve, not, serve now the Lord your God and his people Israel. Where did it go? Where have we read since Solomon put it in the most holy place? The staves were taken out and were singing without the most holy place. Where have we seen it move? Evidently, it was moved somehow, some way. And it's not to now, Josiah says, let's put it back. Isn't that kind of interesting? The ark moved. Now, the ark is going to move pretty soon in the next chapter. It's going to heaven. And in Revelation, you'll find it in heaven. No idiots make movies about, you know, the Nazis took it. That's ridiculous. But since 2 Chronicles 5, 9, where did the ark go and when did it go and who took it? David took it and put it on a cart and one man touched it and he was fried on the spot. It had to be the sons of Kohath that moved it or what's going on here? It's not in the spot. Now it's it. And prepare yourself by the houses of your fathers. After your courses, each Levite family had a particular duty. Courses were set by David. According to the writings of David, the king of Israel, and according to the writings of Solomon, his son. Now the courses and the priests and the duties of the priests were not in the law of by families, they were by David and Solomon. Once the temple was going to be built by David, not built yet, but by Solomon, they would need no one to carry the furniture. And David established the music service. David established that this family gets this course, this family does this job, that family does this job. And God approved of it. And stand in the holy place, according to the divisions of your families, of your fathers, of your brethren, the people. And after the division, the family, the Levites. And when we come up to John the Baptist's father, his course was on his day to go and offer the incense. That course was found in David's writings in, I believe, his Chronicles. So, kill the Passover... Now look, it's plural, but there's multiple lambs. And sanctify, set yourselves apart, and prepare your brethren, the Levites and the priests, that they may do according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. Josiah is saying, we got to do it the way God wants us to do it. The way David has established it. The way Solomon has was been approved by God. And Josiah gave to the people, of the of the flock of lamb of the flock of lambs and kids all the passover offerings for all were present to the number of thirty thousand and three thousand bullocks these were of the king's substance josiah is giving animals for the passover for the sacrifices for the people the princes gave willingly unto the people to the priests and to the levites hilkiah and Zechariah and Jehiel, rulers of the house of God, gave unto the priests for the Passover offering 2,600 small cattle, 
and 300 oxen. These would be the peace offerings, thank you offerings, the burnt offerings. Kaniah also and Shemaiah and Nethanel, his brethren, and Hashabiah, and Jael and Jozbad, chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for the Passover offering 5,000 small cattle and 500 oxen. That's a lot of animals being sacrificed. Aren't you glad Jesus Christ is that one offering for us all? So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses according to the king's commandment. The service. You see that word service? That's where we get the word for service for the Bible, for church service. This is what the Levites and the priests had to do before God. And that service has nothing to do with what goes on with the service in the church. We don't offer animals. We don't have priests doing sacrifices. And they killed the Passover and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands. Found in Exodus 12. And Levites slayed. That's the only time that word shows up. Them. They end the meat. They removed the burnt offerings that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people to offer unto the Lord, as is written in the book of Moses. And so did they with the oxen. They did everything according to the law. And they roasted. That's the first time that word shows up. They roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance, but the other holy offering saw they in pots and called drones, that's the first time that word shows up, in pans and divide them speedily among all the people. All the meat is in pots and pans and cauldrons. That Passover meat was on the fire, according to Exodus 12, 8 and 9. That meat is touching the fire. The other meat, it's in the pots, it's not being touched by the fire. It's being cooked. But that Passover lamb was to be in the flames as Jesus Christ would go into the flames of hell. And afterwards they made ready for themselves, the priests. And for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, those are the priests, were busied, only time that word shows up, in offering the burnt offerings and the fat unto night. And they're just doing it. One after another, after another, after another, and it's come nightfall. Therefore the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. They are busy this, this today. I mean today, as this is being written. They are busy. And the singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their place. They had a particular place. According to the commandment of David, and Asaph, and Heman, and Jeduthun, the king's seer, and the porters waited at every gate, they might not depart from their service, for their brethren and Levites prepared for them. So there's singing going on, everybody's at the gate like they're supposed to be, everybody's doing what they're supposed to be, it's just a busy afternoon. So all the servants of the Lord was prepared the same day to keep the Passover. And to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of the Lord, brazen altar, according to all the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time, the first month, the 14th day, and the Feast of Leavened Bread, seven days, that would be the 15th days of the 21st day, the first month. There was no Passover like to, the, to that kept in Israel. From the days of Samuel the prophet, neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a prophet as Josiah kept. So Israel didn't have, Israel North didn't have no Passover. And you say, well, Hezekiah chapter 30, he had a Passover. Didn't everybody take part? But remember Hezekiah's Passover was the second month, the 14th day. The first month, the 14th day, they were cleaning the temple. 
And by the time they got cleaned the temple and took all the nonsense and the junk and, and all the, the, the trees and all the junk out of the temple that didn't belong in there, we're going to serve the Passover. Oh, man, we missed it. And Hezekiah had to, God, we want to do it. Exodus says that we can do it the, the second month on the 14th day. Josiah has done the Passover correctly on the right day with the right heart as Hezekiah. But Hezekiah did it, had to do it in the second month. And it's recorded this has not been done since Samuel. What about David? Samuel died before David became king. Remember before before uh, King Saul dies in battle, he goes and sees the witch to get the spirit of Saul, Samuel up? What about Solomon? Where was his Passover? And the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The 18th year of the reign of Josiah was the Passover kept. And all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, the king of Egypt, came up to fight against Char Chichemish by the Euphrates. Now that's a long way up. Egypt and going over to where Iraq is. Now, Necho has to pass through Israel. And Josiah went out against him. Nico. But he, Nico, sent ambassadors to him saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? What are you doing here? It's my land. <laughs> but what are you doing? I come not against thee this day. Listen, I know I'm passing through, but I'm not here for you. Sorry. I'm going somewhere else. I come not against thee this day, but against the house. Where have I have warred for God? Here is God speaking to a, to a, look at the capital G by the Holy Spirit. Here is God speaking to a heathen king says, I got a job for you. I want you to go all the way up to Euphrates. And I want you to, I want you to battle this king up there. And he's also putting Josiah to a test. What's Josiah going to do? So it's interesting, capital G, commanded me to make haste, forbear thee from meddling, that's the first time that word shows up, with God, Josiah, it's a Gentile king talking to a Jewish man who's right with God, got that? Have you ever been rebuked by an unsaved person? I have a couple times, and man, that chewed my butt. That is some serious crow eating. And Josiah, who's right with God, should turn around and say, oh, okay, thanks for the warning. I really didn't understand, but I understand. Who is with me that he destroy thee not? God is working with me right now. That's Nico. Josiah, go home. Relax. I'm not here for you. And... If you do come, you're going to get hurt. That's the warning. Nevertheless, oh boy, Josiah would, would not turn his face from him. He didn't listen to Nico and God, but disguised himself. Uh-oh, VBS. He put on a, another uniform. He put on another character. He got dressed up. Now we got trouble. Every time somebody gets dressed up in the Bible to be something else, they get in trouble. Churches haven't figured that out yet. That he might fight with him. Now he came against, verse 21, against Nico. Now he heard that God is working with Nico. Well, if God's with you, Nico, I'm going to fight with you in the power of God. I'm going to fight with you. 
Nico's already told him, you don't belong here. God does not want you with me. Josiah is putting his nose where it doesn't belong. And hearken not to the words of Nico from the mouth of God. There's inspiration. As God, the Holy Spirit, used Moses Ray, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, as the Holy Spirit had Paul write to the churches, to the letters of the churches, as Paul, as God would have the inspiration of Proverbs and Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes by Solomon, as God would inspire Isaiah to write and Jeremiah using Baruch to write, God has inspired this king of Egypt. It doesn't say Pharaoh, it says king of Egypt. King of Egypt, I'm going to put a word in your mouth. Remember Balaam? And with the word in their mouth, king of Egypt said, Nico said, do not follow me, do not join me, do not interfere. That is God's word. Mouth of God. And came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. You recognize that place? That will be the battle of Armageddon. And the archers shot, the king, shot at the king Josiah. And the king said to his servants, Have me away for I am sore wounded. He got hit. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot. And put him in the second chariot, which he had. I don't know why he had two chariots. And they brought him to Jerusalem. And he died. He died disobeying the word of God. Though he's done everything right. It is deadly to do what God tells you not to do. It is deadly not to do what God did tell you to do. Did you hear what I said? It is deadly to do what God's told you not to do. And it's deadly to not do what God's told you to do. And he died and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah. Uh-oh, Jeremiah. We're coming to the end of Judah. Jeremiah is that, that prophet that preaches against Judah. We got one more chapter left. And then Judah's gone. Unto Ezra and Nehemiah. So we're in the time of Jeremiah now. Lamented for Josiah. That's why they call him the weeping prophet. And he writes lamentation. And all the singing men and the singing women spake of the Josiah in their lamentations. There's only one other place that word shows up in Ezekiel 2.10. Lamentations. That's the first time. Ezekiel 2.10. Plural. So singing also involves lamentations. Lamentations, the book that comes after Josiah, after Josiah, after Jeremiah is a songbook of despair. To this day, and made them an ordinance of Israel, and behold, they are written in the lamentation. Now that's not the lamentations of Jeremiah, because there's no ordinance written about Josiah. So there's another book of Lamentations somewhere, and don't go bother finding it. God didn't want us to have it. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, you can't say that, according to that which, which was written in the law of the Lord, he kept the law. But he disobeyed God, and he died. You know what caused hospitals and police? Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Do not eat of that fruit. That's where the trouble we're in. 
You know what the trouble we get in today? God said not to do it. We do it. God says do it. We don't do it. His goodness according to that which was written in the law of the Lord. And his deeds first and last. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel, king, first, second king, of Israel and Judah. What a terrible way to go after you've been so great. And because you did not want to listen to God. 